Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for The Mask or Austin Powers for some 90s nostalgia, and like and subscribe for smarter allies next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Asami from The Legend of Korra, the only person on Team Korra with a single good idea ever. To be fair, Bolin and Mako were both orphans, and Korra was in Avatar training since she was a toddler. Maybe they should just teach the Avatar, like, basic math, definitely civics. Or just kung fu, that's fine too. How do you do a shake hand, shake hand, shake hand? How do you do a shake hand? Just state your name a bit. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need the power of invention. You're rocking flapper era technology, which is pretty hot stuff in Dungeons and Dragons. Next, specifically, we need a joy buzzer. You're the unofficial fifth element, lightning. Actually, that's just part of firebending. Finally, we'll make sure that you can fight with your hands and not just the joy buzzer, also punching. For stats, we'll be using the standard point buy from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Intelligence all the way to 15, it's your job on the team. I feel like a lot of times I end up playing a high intelligence character because of how popular headstrong idiots are it's okay to be the voice of reason nothing wrong with that strength and dexterity can go to 13 you're pretty physically fit for a complete nerd constitution at 12 because dying is bad and asami does not die in legend of korra wisdom and charisma are both at 11 those are our dump stats they're not good but they're not terrible asami isn't really bad at anything it's probably why she does well on just about every mission asami is a human custom lineage is like variant human but with slightly different stats that work better for us take fighting initiate for the unarmed fighting fighting style for your feet of choice that'll let you deal 1d6 damage with your unarmed attacks 1d8 if you have two free hands and a d4 of damage every round to a creature you have grappled i'm guessing your glove is pretty strong not just for fighting also for jar opening i've been working out for a year now and i still need hot water sometimes for pasta sauce bump your intelligence with your two free points take stealth for your skill of choice and the noble background for history and persuasion i always reference hall and oats but today when i say you're a rich girl it's a gwen stefani reference instead no doubt that's coming as a surprise to some of you but it's something i have to do We'll kick things off as an artificer because that's the inventor class and that's what you are. You can grab two skills from the artificer list like sleight of hand and arcana. The arcana is pretty obvious for tech stuff, but sleight of hand is for all your stealth missions. You tend to do quite a bit of espionage. For some small level inventions, magical tinkering lets you put some tiny magical effects into tiny non-magical items. A static image, a puff of smoke, just a sensory harmless effect to impress your friends or your more than friends. You also get spells and cantrips. Mending puts two pieces of something back together or fixes a crack in something always useful for inventing when you don't have to sweat breaking things. Shocking Grasp is pretty much the Asami spell, dealing 1d8 lightning damage with a melee spell attack and preventing the target from taking reactions. It's really useful for getting away since that will prevent opportunity attacks. For first level spells, we'll just get all the physical standards. Jump and long strider, that's triple jump distance and an extra 10 feet of movement speed. Part of me wants to give you monk levels, but eventually you slap on some heavy duty armor and that would pull focus from the intelligence investment. It just wouldn't be very clean. And you have people working for you to keep things clean. Second level artificers get infusions. Special inventions you keep for yourself, like enhanced arcane focus to add one to your spell attack rolls and you can ignore up to half cover. To be fair, your method of attacking people is literally grabbing them. It should be pretty accurate. And defense adds one to the ac of your armor or shield you don't wear a shield so go for armor goggles of night give you some dark vision so you can see in the dark with your bad human eyes and sending stones can communicate between each other and they're smaller than the giant radios of the era third level artificers can choose a specialty and armorers make the best armor which is what i would call the mech suits you can use your heavy armor as a spell casting focus and ignore strength requirements with heavy armor as well as choosing a special model the Guardian gives you a melee weapon that deals 1d8 thunder damage and gives a creature disadvantage on attack rolls against creatures that aren't you. You can also give yourself temporary HP equal to your artificer level and amount of times per day equal to your proficiency bonus. But if you'd rather do some infiltration, the infiltrator armor will work best, adding 5 feet to your walking speed and giving you advantage on stealth checks if the armor isn't heavy. It also neutralizes the stealth penalty if it is. With that, you also get a lightning launcher that deals 1d6 lightning damage and an extra d6 once per round. That'll let you launch your lightning. Pretty straightforward. Both of those special weapons, the lightning launcher and the thunder gauntlets, will use your intelligence modifier, so we should push that up. Now, just because your special armor can be heavy armor doesn't mean it has to be. You still get all of these bonuses if you use something like leather or something in the medium category. That's probably where I would put what Asami wears. Until you get the giant mech suit, obviously. Fourth level artificers get an ability score improvement. Use it to push up your intelligence modifier. That's what you're using for your inventions, spells, and your best weapon options. Turns out when you get future era technology in the 
bodies, that's almost as good as bending. Fifth level armors get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action. That's a double thunder punch or two lightning launches. Though your shocky grasp is now dealing 2d8, so that's also a good option. Artificers have a lot of options. It's really delightful. You also learn second level spells. Shatter is free from armor, forcing a constitution saving throw in a 10 foot radius, dealing 3d8 thunder damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. Inorganic creatures have disadvantage. Obviously, you're better at breaking mechs when you build them. Pyrotechnics can either make a firework or a smoke grenade. The firework forces a constitution saving throw on creatures, blinding them for a round if they fail. And if you choose the smoke bomb, it heavily obscures the area for a minute. Fireworks are better for getting the upper hand in a fight, but the smoke bomb is better if you're trying to get away. You'll be pretty tanky in your tank suit, but getting outnumbered is bad, especially with spells like heat metal floating around. Sixth level artificers get tool expertise, so you can double your proficiency bonus with your tinkerers, thieves, and smiths tools, and whatever tool you chose at level one. You're dating an avatar of the gods, so what about calligraphy? Just so you can understand her power level. You also get two more infusions. Spell Refueling Ring lets you recover a spell slot of third level or lower once per day, just keeping you a little extra charged. And Gloves of Thievery add five to your sleight of hand checks, helping you with all those sneaky missions where you wear the infiltrator suit. Seventh level artificers get Flash of Genius, letting you add your intelligence modifier to the skill check or saving throw of a creature within 30 feet of you and amount of times per day equal to your intelligence modifier, helping you spread the power of the single brain cell Team Korra is sharing. Eighth level artificers get another ability score improvement, letting you cap off your intelligence modifier for more brilliant advice and better lightning hands. Ninth level armorers get armor modifications, meaning you can treat your armor as separate pieces of armor for more infusions, and you can infuse two more items at once as long as they're part of your armor. Now, your armor is a headpiece, a chest piece, gauntlets, weapons, and a boot. So mix and match, this isn't so much a specific build as much as it is a build to let you build. You also get third level spells, Lightning Bolt is free from armor, letting you force a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 100 foot line, dealing 8d6 lightning damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed, it's just another way to send out those static blasts. Protection from energy lets you give a creature resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage for an hour. There's a lot of elemental damage flying around in your world. Build an insulated suit to keep your buddies safe from it. Tenth level artificers are magical item adepts, letting you attune up to four magical items at once and just in time for more infusions. Tenth level is really where things are getting good. Winged boots give you a flying speed for a minute at a time for up to four hours a day. Keep in mind, one minute is 10 rounds of combat. I don't even think you're gonna use 10 minutes of flying time. You're always gonna be able to recharge it. You just won't be able to fly over a mountain. Fly like a hummingbird, sting like a broken power line. Cloak of protection will give you plus one to your AC and saving throws if you want a cool cape that also makes you safer. I'd feel safer in a cape. 11th level artificers get spell storing item, letting you put a spell of second level or lower into an item. Then creatures can cast that spell out of the item an amount of times per long rest equal to double your intelligence modifier using your intelligence modifier, which is good, because again, I think you're the only one on the squad who isn't rocking a negative score, unless you count Tenzin, but I'm talking like core four. And even Tenzin's probably only like plus one. 12th level artificers get another ability score improvement. Round up your charisma and dexterity modifier. You get no benefit from odd numbers. I'm choosing those because you can't build yourself a talk better belt or backflip shoes. You can build flying shoes, but you can't build backflip shoes. 13th level artificers can learn 4th level spells. I'll grab stone shape to shape some stone that fits in a 5 foot cube. You could use it to make a weapon, or you could use it to make a hole in the wall. It's like earthbending, but with dynamite. 14th level artificers are magical item savants, letting you tune up to 5 magical items at once, just in time for 2 more infusions. 2 more totally reasonable infusions. Belt of Hill Giant Strength gives you 21 strength, so plus 7 in one level, and that'll make your unarmed fighting on par with that of the benders, while they were studying kung fu, you were just studying. It all balances out in the end. Your girlfriend's always talking about balance. Amulet of Health will jack your constitution to 19. Remember, hit points aren't meat points. This will just keep you from dying. 15 level armors get perfected armor, making your armor better no matter what type it is. But I'll specify since you're comfortable in both. Guardians can yoink people in as a reaction, forcing a strength saving throw on them and pulling them in. It'll also let you make an opportunity attack against them. You can do this an amount of times per day equal to your proficiency bonus, but it should help you make sure that the bad guys don't get away. Infiltrators get to give the creature they shoot with the lightning launcher disadvantage on attacks against them, and the next attack against that creature has advantage. It also deals an extra d6 of lightning damage. Makes sense for Mako with his lightning bending abilities, but it could just be a little residual static for everyone else. 
16th level artificers get another ability score improvement or a feat. We'll grab the skill expert feat to push your wisdom up to 12. No odd numbers, they're bad. You also get another skill like acrobatics to help you break grapples and expertise in a skill to double your proficiency bonus with arcana checks to make sure that you're understanding all the machines. 17th level artificers can learn 5th level spells. Pass wall is free from armor, creating an opening in a stone surface that you can move through for an hour. If you cast this, your dad might not have to make a sacrifice play. Sorry to bring that up, I know it's a bummer. 18th level artificers are magical item masters, letting you attune up to 6 total items. You also get 2 more infusions. Ring of protection lets you add 1 more to your AC and saving throws, or you could give it to someone else, maybe like the avatar, I don't know, I don't want to pressure you. Helm of awareness is the best head option for you, giving you advantage on your initiative rolls and you can't be surprised while you're awake, helping you make up for your only pretty good passive perception. 19th level artificers get our last ability score improvement, I think dexterity is the way to go, you're just probably not using your wisdom or charisma for anything but saving throws and that's going to be much better next level because our capstone is the 20th level of artificer for soul of artifice giving you plus one to your saving throws for every item you have attuned that's plus six with your maximum infusions and you can just delete a piece of your armor instead of hitting zero hp hitting one hp instead and losing one of your infusions it's pretty good it's probably one of the best capstones in the entire game I don't know though, bards do get to restore their inspiration die, that's pretty good. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're not bad at anything. Your minimum modifier is plus one and you've got flash of geniuses to add five to that for free. Not to mention saving throws that range from plus nine to plus 19. Your lowest saving throw is plus nine, that's, that's amazing. You can also deal consistent damage and it can all be magical. And you have great armor. You know, I'm starting to think that inventing science fiction tech in a jazz age will make you a little bit busted. For weaknesses, I guess some of your checks are only pretty good. You're only a half caster too, so you don't have 9th level spells. And if you went 20 levels of druid, you would be able to give yourself 80 temporary HP as an action. And you can't do that. Armorers are busted, surprise. Keep yourself safe, keep the avatars safe. Sneak into places, run a company like an absolute boss, because you know what? You are a boss. Just remember that the power creep doesn't just apply to the heroes of the story, so the villains could end up making you say bye bye bye. Thanks for watching, if you liked the video, subscribe for more, we make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for The Mask or Austin Powers, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.